Hey guys, it's 4199, and today I'm going to talk a bit about a category of advanced pump it up footwork techniques. So you may have been watching a player at your arcade or on YouTube, and you see a complex pattern coming up on the screen and think, that's a crazy hard pattern, let's see how they do. And they manage to hit the pattern while seemingly not even moving. Or maybe you've seen someone like Windforce execute an absolutely mental cross pad pattern while remaining facing forward the whole time. Have you ever been hit with a lightning fast crossover stream that leaves you thinking, how on earth are you meant to hit that? This technique that many players utilize, and that you may benefit from, is called cheating. And today I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to manipulate double step and slide your way through patterns like the pros. Let's quickly define cheating so that we can better understand why it's helpful, and clear up some ambiguities. Cheating is a commonly used umbrella term for any sort of technique that involves the execution of a pattern in a fashion that is not originally intended by the step chart creator. It's finding other, more comfortable, less tiring, or more efficient ways to hit patterns. This has its benefits and its downsides, which I will talk about later on. Under the umbrella of cheating, there are a couple other techniques I've heard it grouped in with. Manual, double stepping, pattern manipulation, and mashing. The first three terms fall under cheating, but mashing should not be confused with this term. Manual refers exclusively to cheating patterns on singles or cheating singles type patterns on doubles. Pattern manipulation is pretty much synonymous with cheating as far as I know. And lastly, double stepping refers to cheating by stepping two or more times consecutively with one foot, as the name suggests. I'll get into greater detail later on in the video. For the rest of the video, I'll be referring to all the techniques I talk about as cheating for simplicity's sake. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about mashing. Mashing is not cheating, nor is it pattern manipulation. Mashing is a slightly cruder method, consisting of repeatedly stepping on the arrows over which have incoming notes in no particular order. Because mashing is more simply about not letting any arrows get past the receptors, it's a technique that disregards patterning and therefore cannot be called pattern manipulation or any of the other techniques under the umbrella of cheating. Now before any of you get hasty and say, cheating looks so much easier than doing patterns legit, so why don't I just cheat everything? Let me go over the instances when you should and should not cheat patterns. First off, let me start with a little disclaimer. Understanding how to perform patterns properly and pump it up is a crucial skill to have, and without it, a player will lack very strong fundamental technique. Therefore, I highly encourage anyone looking to learn how to cheat to first study and learn how to do the respective patterns properly before attempting to cheat them. I've seen several players at my arcade pick up cheating as a habit early on and be capped in skill relatively quickly due to their lack of chart knowledge. Cheating is very useful for conserving energy on difficult twists or patterns that require a lot of movement. This can be used strategically to save energy for a harder, later section of the chart. Cheating can also be used to hit patterns that would otherwise be too difficult or too fast for you to execute legitimately yourself. And finally, you can use cheating to successfully hit patterns that would otherwise be incredibly difficult or near impossible to play properly. I'll be going more into depth about a handful of these patterns later on in the video. So without further ado, let's dive in depth about how to smash these patterns. Singles is the mode where cheating and pattern manipulation thrive, and people all around the world strive for more efficient, more minimalistic gameplay. For each pattern, I'll cover one to two different ways on how to cheat it, as well as give visual diagrams on how it's done. But before getting into specific pattern techniques, I'm going to try and explain some fundamental footwork concepts. The different footwork performed while cheating all fall under three categories, listed from hardest to easiest. Rolling, hopping, and stepping. Rolling is the most difficult but most precise of the three, and involves rolling your foot from heel to toe and vice versa to hit two notes in a row with the same foot. This technique, however, calls for rather large feet, as the smaller your feet are, the more difficult it becomes to reach from the blue arrows to the red arrows without moving your foot. This technique requires an in-depth and fluent understanding of how to cheat certain patterns, but when mixed in with other types of footwork can make a great addition to your arsenal of technique. Hopping involves grouping two or more notes into chunks and performing short jumps to hop from note group to note group. Unlike the rolling technique, this method is very accessible to all shoe sizes and is one of the easier concepts to learn. Tip: Pump it up's timing windows are slightly bigger on the late side, so when hitting a group of notes, make sure to hit them with a slight delay to improve accuracy. Stepping is the easiest of the three, but the least practical at higher levels and speeds. Simply put, when a pattern comes up that you wish to cheat, you just hit the pattern with whichever foot the side of the notes come down on, without turning your body. 
This technique becomes more inefficient as the speed of the chart increases, but for lower speeds and simpler patterns it can come in handy. The cheating techniques I'll be going over today will utilize all three of these techniques, so make sure to bear them in mind. Alright, let's get into the pattern explanations. Arguably the easiest pattern to cheat is the red crossover. This turn pattern shows up in pretty much all charts that include turn patterns. The first way to play this pattern is by hopping. Hit the blue arrow with your heel, then hop forwards to hit the next three red, yellow, red notes as a bracket. You can also roll this pattern. Roll your left foot from blue to red, then roll your right foot from yellow to red. You can perform this pattern backwards as well using the same two techniques, but it's slightly more difficult to execute and requires additional practice. This pattern, while very similar to the red crossover, is actually a little bit of a step up in difficulty. The easiest way of playing this pattern is by hitting red with your left toe, then hopping to blue-yellow, then hitting the remaining blue with your right foot. You can also use the bracket hop technique from the red crossover by starting out the same, but then hitting the blue-yellow-blue blue as one bracket. However, this requires slightly more foresight to set up for. Rolling can also be utilized to hit all four notes in this pattern in groups of two, similar to the red rolling technique. Finally, an alternative to the step hop step, you can just double step the first two notes with your left foot and the last two with your right. Ah yes, the quintessential singles pattern. This pattern can pose as a roadblock to many new players learning to cheat, but fear not, with the right amount of practice you can master it in a timely fashion. The most common and easiest way of cheating an end run is by hitting the first blue with your left foot, then hopping to bracket the red-yellow-red, red, similar to the red crossover technique, then hitting the remaining blue with your right foot. This technique is repeatable on both sides. The other method to execute this pattern is by rolling the M run in groups of two. Just like the red crossover rolling technique, roll the blue-red with your left foot, then the yellow-red with your right foot. Repeat this on the other side. Roll blue-red with your right, then red-yellow with your left. This method can yield insanely good results with high accuracy, but is much harder to learn and perform at higher speeds, and even harder to master, so proceed with caution. A diagonal twist is any pattern that makes your foot travel diagonally from a blue across to a red, and vice versa. This pattern is one of the only patterns that is actually most easily performed when double-stepped, partially because it only involves three notes. You can reduce the number of steps you take by stepping the first note, then bracketing the last two, and vice versa. Additionally, if you're not comfortable reading this pattern as a bracket, you can instead step the first note, then jump the last two notes. Finally, to hit the pattern with the least amount of movement, you can simply treat all three notes as a big bracket and hit it all at once, slightly delayed of course. I define corner twists as any twisty patterns that have you only hitting the red and blue arrows. These can be especially tricky because they often include patterns that force you to step three times in a row or more, which can be very awkward. You can play most of these patterns by simply hitting the pattern with either foot on each side of the pad. Some patterns can be rolled with relative ease while others can be hopped, and others can be hit with the utilization of a mix of both. These patterns have less of a formula than the others, so try practicing different techniques to hit them and figure out what's most comfortable for you. On occasion, cheating a drill becomes feasible, though the instances in which you can perform this technique are very far and few between. The best way to cheat a drill is by foot switching the pattern. Foot switching is performed by alternating your feet and hitting the same two panels repeatedly. This, in theory, basically lets you drill twice as fast. In order to effectively trigger both panels on each step, it's important for you to lean your weight back on the bar and lift your feet up higher than usual. Once again, this is a rather advanced technique that you won't use often, so don't stress if you don't get it right away. Alright, so that pretty much covers the techniques I know for cheating singles patterns. I may have missed a couple, but there are honestly so many ways to play patterns in this game, and I won't be able to cover every single one in this video. With that all said, it's time to talk about the other half of cheating. Doubles cheating mostly involves reducing the number of steps you have to take to cross from one pad to the other thus making it simpler and less tiring to travel across the pads. I would rate these techniques slightly higher in difficulty when it comes to learning and mastery, as finding your footing on doubles, especially when bracketing, is comparatively much harder than singles, so make sure you practice these thoroughly. Side note, single style patterns sometimes do show up in doubles, and you can perform them the same as you would on singles. Because I've already explained the techniques in the previous section, I won't be going over them again. 
The mother of all patterns, the staircase of doom. We've all seen it, that diagonal line that spells death. But we can actually break down this pattern to make it much easier to play. To cheat this pattern, you'll start by tapping the leftmost blue with your left foot, then hopping to bracket red, yellow, red, then proceeding to hop on the middle two blue panels, hopping again to hit the red, yellow, red bracket on the P2 side, then finally hitting the rightmost blue with your right foot. This can be done in the opposite direction as well. Cheating the pattern like this drastically cuts down on the number of steps that you have to take to cross the pad and keeps you facing forward while performing it. The half stair is a six note staircase that uses the middle six panels. This pattern is much easier to cheat than the full double M run and can be done using either bracketing or rolling. To cheat this pattern, play the red blue as a bracket with your left foot and then the center blue blue notes as a bracket with your right foot. Then step to hit the final two red and yellow notes. You can also hit the first two groups of brackets instead as rolls to increase accuracy. This pattern is probably the most difficult pattern to cheat and pull off properly on doubles. It's performed similarly to the regular double stair, but you have to move your body from pad to pad even quicker due to the missing note in the middle. There are two types of broken stair patterns, one where the first middle blue note is missing, and one where the second middle blue note is missing. In the first case, start on blue with your left foot, hop to bracket red yellow red with your right foot bracketing the yellow red, then push yourself off to hit the P2 blue arrow with your right foot. Then hop to bracket the red yellow red steps, and finish off by hitting the rightmost blue with your right foot. In the second case, start on blue with your left foot, hop to bracket the red yellow red, but this time hit the right blue with your left foot afterwards. Then you need to push off the pad with your left foot, hop all the way to P2 to bracket the red yellow red again, and then finally hit the rightmost blue with your right foot. Repeat the same steps for both types in reverse to complete the broken stair. First, let's define fast pad transitions. Fast pad transitions are any pattern that takes you from one pad to the other in four steps or fewer. In this video, I'll be going over two types of fast transitions. Fast transitions starting with red, and fast transitions starting with blue. In both cases, we can group the four note pattern into two brackets instead of four steps. In the case of our red starting transition pattern, it's slightly easier than the blue starting pattern. When you bracket the red starting pattern, you face the direction you're moving across the pad, whereas the blue starting pattern has you face away from the direction you move. In some very rare cases, there are patterns that step artists create with pattern manipulation in mind. These patterns don't show up very often, so don't sweat it if you don't get them down on the first few tries. I'll go over some of them briefly. The ending of Cleaner S23 consists of a 1.5 measure, 304.5 beats per minute run, which is nearly impossible to play properly as a stream. We can cheat this by treating the first half of the pattern as a set of alternating bracket jumps, and the second half as another set of alternating bracket jumps. In the middle of Sorceress Elise D24, we can turn the foot speed bursts into brackets to significantly save on movement and in turn, energy. As mentioned before, the drills in Rock the House D22 can be played as foot switch brackets in order to keep up with the rapid columns of notes. There are several more instances of these patterns you have to manipulate, but I'll leave you guys to find them and lab them out for yourselves. Great, so now we know how to cheat most of the patterns in the game. But there are actually certain times when cheating is too difficult to execute and may be more detrimental than playing the pattern legitimately. Here are a couple examples. Side drills, split drills, and straightforward stream. And one I'd like to talk a bit more in detail about, anchored twists. Anchored twists are patterns that have you anchor one foot on an arrow while your other foot moves around the pad. The reason why these are so difficult to cheat is because in order to hit the note that you would usually cross over to hit, you are forced to do a triple step with the anchoring foot. As you can imagine, when stepping more than twice consecutively with the same foot, it becomes nearly impossible to keep up with the tempo. The clay team players from Chile have actually managed to master the triple step in the last year or so, so it is definitely possible, but do proceed with caution if you want to attempt this pattern. That pretty much wraps up this video. If you learned something useful, share this video with a friend. Feel free to share this video around in different PIU groups as a resource. I would highly appreciate it. If you would like to see more videos like this one, please let me know in the comments or on Discord. Oh, and go check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel if you like dance game content. 
Anyway, that's gonna be everything today. Good luck on the dance pad, everyone.